realize that objectivity is crucial. It is very important that we believe in objective truth, which is more than our own subjective feelings or desires. Objective truth is simply that no matter what we believe to be the case, some things will always be true and others will always be false. That which is true will always be true, even when we stop believing it or if we stop believing it. Our subjective feelings or desires do not change who God is, nor does it make God what he is. God is truth. When he says, I am who I am, God summons us to humble objectivity. He puts an end to the notion that everybody's view of God is as good as everybody else's. God is who he is, and nobody's opinion of him makes any difference. So all this new age nonsense about there being many ways to God and many ways for you to get to heaven, those are based on objectivity. They're based on the feelings of the persons who came up with that religion. Jesus remains the only way to the Father, and accepting him is the only way to heaven. And that's not based on my feelings or desires, but the pure, unadulterated, objective truth, the word of the one true and living God. I am who I am. We must conform to God, not he to us. Even if we were to rationalize this, we'd still have to conform to God. Children learn their manners from their parents, not parents from their children. Players learn their moves from their coaches, not coaches from, from the players. Soldiers learn strategies from the general, not the general from the soldiers. So it's crystal clear that creatures should conform their lives to the will of the creator. But very few of God's creatures, that's you and I, very few of us follow this path of reasonableness. Most of us prefer to go our own way with, with very little to no thought of conforming our lives to the will and character of an absolute God. This infinite, absolute, self-determining God has drawn near to us in Jesus Christ. In John 8, 56 to 58, Jesus answers his critics, the Jewish leaders. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Before Abraham was, I am. Jesus took up all the majestic truth of the name of God, wrapped it in the humility of servanthood, offered himself as the atonement for all our rebellion, and thereby making a way for us to see the glory and Jesus Christ, we who are born of God, have the unspeakable privilege of knowing Yahweh as our Father. I am who I am, the God who exists, the God whose personality and power is owing solely to himself, the God who never changes, the God from whom all power and energy flows, the God who all creation should conform its life to. This is the name of God. I am who I am. All those who know the name of God can put their trust in him. These words, I am who I am, are so important, and honestly, I don't believe I can do them justice. But let's look at the seven sayings of Jesus found in the Gospel of John to explain who this man called Jesus truly is. For every circumstance, wherever you find yourself in this life, wherever you are tonight, whatever you're facing, there is an I am for that. And you don't need an iPhone to download this app. John, John 6 and 35 says, then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. Are you spiritually hungry tonight? There's an app for that. Jesus, the bread of life. Like the manna, everyone who seeks him will find him. But each of us has to find him for ourselves. No one else can receive him for us. And we can't receive him for anyone else. We all get an amount sufficient for our salvation. No one is lacking. None of him is wasted. Are you thirsty? Like the woman at the well, Jesus is saying, come, drink, and never be thirsty. The psalmist David put it this way, as the deer pants for the water stream, so my soul longs for you, O God. 
Jesus, the light of the world, John 8 and 12. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. If you know this man called Jesus, you will no longer walk in darkness. You are no longer spiritually ignorant. You have the power of understanding, especially spiritual truth that brings eternal life. Take the time to learn and apply spiritual truth in faith and Jesus is the answer. So don't ask Siri. Don't ask Google. Download the app in your soul today. The light of the world, Jesus Christ. Let him live and reign in your life so that your light, the light of Christ, can shine before man that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Whatever your question tonight, Jesus is the answer. Are you carrying a burden of guilt or shame because of sin tonight? His word says in 1 John 1 and 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Accept him tonight and let him carry your burdens. Are you sick in your body? James 5 and 14, 6, 14 to 16 says, is any of you sick? He should call on the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make him well. The Lord will raise him up. And if he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins one to another and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of righteous man is powerful and effective. Whatever your spiritual question tonight, don't ask Siri, don't ask Google. Jesus is the answer. John 10 and 9, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. Salvation is found through Jesus. He is the gate to the kingdom, and no one can enter except through him. When you enter through him, you dwell in peace in the midst of plenty. My phone has a lock that requires my fingerprint to unlock it. And no matter how my kids may try, they can't unlock my phone unless I unlock it for them. So they have no access by, unless I use my fingerprint to unlock it. A man called Jesus is your access. You can only enter heaven through him. He is the gate. You've got to accept Jesus if you want access. He's the only access to the Father. John 10 and 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He loves you and I so much that he paid our ransom. The ultimate expression of love, laying down his own life to pay our entrance fee. Do you get how much he loves you? Do you get it? He took on human flesh, God himself, took on human flesh and died a cruel death just for you and I to experience the gift of eternal life. Jesus said in John 11, 25, 26, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. I love this. I love this I am saying because it, it reminds me that although a believer will experience physical death, they will rise again. They will rise again. He will still have life. All those who die in faith will rise again. The single qualification for eternal life is to believe that Jesus' death paid the entire price for our sins. Whether you die before his coming or you pass from this life directly into the next one, those who are in Christ Jesus shall live because of the resurrection power of this man called Jesus. Jesus said in John 14 and 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There is no other way, as I've said before. There is no other way into the presence of God other than by accepting the Lord's death as payment in full for our sins. As Peter said in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to man by which we must be saved. Jesus is the only remedy God has provided for man's sin problem. He is the only way to eternal life, and that's the truth.com. John 15, 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Fruit bearing only comes when we yield our 
our lives to him and respond to the prompting of the Holy Spirit that he has sent to guide us. If we accept Jesus and never respond to the prompting of the Spirit, we'll still be saved, but we, we would be no more used to the work of the kingdom than the unfruitful branches that the gardener discards after pruning trees. Paul says as much in 1 Corinthians 3, 12 to 15, the unfruitful believer will be saved, but only as one escaping through the flames. Is that what you want? You don't want to, you don't want to waste your, your youth and your time and your energy and all that the gifts and the talents that God has given you just to be saved. You want to be able to use what he has given you to be able to minister to others, to go to and fro, everyone that you come in contact with. You want to be able to share the gospel message with them. You want to be able to, if you can sing, you want to use your singing to minister to others. If, you, if you've been through something, you want to use that to be able to minister to somebody who is going through a similar struggle. Use what God has given you while you have life and breath and strength, especially our young people. While you are full of vigor, yes. use it for God. Use, don't wait until you're old and on your dying bed, and then you say, I wish I had done more. Use what he has given you now. Lord, help us that we do not seek to do much work to bring vain glory to ourselves and seek the praise of man, but let us be guided by the prompting of the Spirit, seeking only to be obedient to the call of God. If not, our lives will be unfruitful, because as the scripture says, without him, we can do nothing of spiritual value. Fruitfulness is not a matter of success or failure from a worldly standpoint. Amen. It's a matter of motive. If, you, if we're not careful, we will see some of our greatest accomplishments burn in the fire of judgment, because we accomplish them with the wrong motives, Amen. like, like self-satisfaction or recognition from others, or even thinking that we're scoring points with God as if that could be done. Only the things which we do by the prompting of the Holy Spirit and where our motive is gratitude for all that we've been given will survive. Only what we do for Christ will last, doing only what the Holy Spirit is leading us to do. What spiritual fruit should you be bearing? Don't allow fear and the lies that the enemy tells you to drown out the voice of God. He's speaking to many of us right now. He's speaking to many of us. It's time to give birth to those dreams, those ideas, those visions. He's calling you. What are you gonna do? Sometimes God gives us an assignment that seems too huge or too difficult for us to handle. But if he gives you the vision, he also makes the provision. You just need to step out in faith. If you know God has called you to do a work, step right out in, in obedience. Step out in obedience. Step out in obedience. Anybody in here feel that God has called them to do something? Has he called you to do something? You may think it's insignificant, or you may think it's too huge for someone like you to do. But if he has given it to you, if he has laid it on your heart to do something, and if you hear the Holy Spirit speaking to you now, come to the altar. Step out. Step out. Step out in obedience to God. Mm. My God, don't be afraid to do what God has called you to do. Even when you feel like it's off the wall, you think it's something that God can't be asking me to do this. Even if you feel that way, step forward even in fear. Be obedient to the Holy Spirit. You've heard the word of God as the Holy Spirit has laid it on my heart. I don't know where you are spiritually. I don't know where you are in your walk with God. I don't, I don't even know if some of you know him personally, if you have a relationship with him. But if you would like to receive him as your savior this evening, yes. the altar is open. 
you know, you don't need to try and fix anything yourself because God isn't looking for perfection. And to be honest with you, we can't fix anything. All we do is mock it up. We can't fix it. So if you're sitting there and you're telling yourself, yes, I want to serve God, but I have so many issues. I have so many things that I need to take care of before I can commit to serving God. I don't know, maybe you're slipping in and out of sin. Maybe you're in a backslidden state. Trust me, you can't do it on your own. No matter how you try, you cannot repair the damage that's done in your life. Only Jesus is able to restore you. Only Jesus. brokenness is, sometimes he, he causes us to be in a place of brokenness just to restore us so that he can receive the glory from it all. So all he, all he wants to do, he, God wants the best for us. He wants the very best for us. And he has put purpose in each and every one of us. Some of us know what it is, and we sit down and we, we're afraid to step out. Don't be disobedient. Don't be disobedient. Time is short, and there are so many people, so many people whose salvation is hinged on you being obedient to the Holy Spirit and stepping forward and doing the work that God has called you to do. Each of us has a purpose in this universe. And it's not, when we go through things, it's not for us. It's never for us. I can tell you, because I've been through some stuff. And I've come to realize that as painful as experiences have been, it's not for me. I've been able to use it to minister to other people. And that's what it's all about. It's not about us. It's not about us. You know, the, the, the downtown church uh, danced to that song, Jesus at the center of it all. It's really all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's not about us. You know? So don't sit there and think that my life is a mess. I have so many things that I need to sort out before I can I can make a commitment to Jesus. I, I, I can't I can't preach. I can't share the gospel with anyone. I, I'm shacking up. I'm, I'm 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 living in sin. Just as you are. He's saying, just as you are. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. All he wants to do is to refine you. But you have to accept him. You have to accept him in order for him to do that. So if there's anyone here tonight that doesn't know Jesus as their savior, I invite you now to come, come to the altar. And we have persons here that can pray with you. The altar is open. Somebody need to come to. 